Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Twin Motion 2023 video coming hot off the press. Now today I'm going to take another deeper dive into product visualization. It's an interesting area that I'm always fascinated in. I nearly chose product design over architecture when I was studying. So definitely something that is quite personal to me. Now, many of my friends are amazing product designers and they use incredible software to do their visualization. Um, but basically, I'm interested to see how Twinmotion 2023 could be something that, you know, in your industry, if you're a product designer, might suddenly revolutionize your workflow. I certainly got some stunning results in a very rapid space of time. And I hope you enjoy this journey with me and I look forward to sharing this content. So if you are new around here, please make sure you like and subscribe. The channel's been going quite well lately and I've been making a lot of videos simply by being motivated by all your wonderful support. So let's get going um, and here is the video. I hope you do enjoy. Thanks for watching everybody. So here we are with the new Twinmotion home screen for Twinmotion 2023.1, the final release. And as you can see, it comes with some really nice new templates, particularly focused on product design. In fact, there's only one for architecture currently, and there seem to be four for product design. So really, I wanted to uh, run through one of these, and you can see that I've opened up this nice sort of uh, product on a plinth scenario, and just really kind of show you how easy it is to visualize product type things within Twinmotion these days. So here I am navigating around the scene in real time. You can see we've got a really nice kind of plinth with the, the bag on there. What I'm interested in also is the background. And you'll notice that when you click the path tracing button, you know, the quality of the images really do absolutely look absolutely stunning straight out the bag, as it were. Excuse the pun. Okay, so here I am working in path tracing. Now, if I do set the uh, level of path tracing to quite low, I can almost uh, move around in real time and sort of navigate and sort of modify things like the materials and the lighting and so on as well. So what we'll do, we'll pop up the media panel and I just really want to show you that if you just click onto some of the other preset images here, what Twinmotion have done is actually created some really nice sort of backgrounds. Um, this one you can see with a bit of kind of like kind of skylight if you like coming in with a bit of sort of nice soft shadowing as well. So these are very very easy to use they're already kind of set up for you and really all you need to do is potentially replace the product and tweak the lighting and you've got a very very nice sort of background for your product itself. So you can see that if I go through to the media dock let's just explore um, the lighting for this particular option. So all I need to do is go up to the top and select my, let's just pull that down a bit. Let's go and select the ambience. Okay, and when I select the ambience, you can see I can adjust that exposure and things like the time of day. Uh, I can go into the details, of course, and then I can things like exposure compensation, the intensity of the sun, set sun size. Now, all of these are there for you to play with and have that kind of uh, impact on your image just to get the lighting absolutely perfect and spot on as you would require. So I really like the uh, new interface that they've introduced with Twinmotion 2023.1, the final release. Um, if you do need to set the actual location in the world, by the way, it's just under the location and the details tab. That was a question that came up in the comments in one of my other videos. Um, so hope you're watching and there it is. Okay, so we'll move on to image five. You can see this is a really nice sort of backdrop, nice and light and very neutral. Um, no sort of hard or sort of direct lighting with sort of shadows or anything. Now then, if you do want to, you can obviously open up your library and I wanted to try out loading in my own product. Um, so what I thought I'd do was just for fun, go onto the Sketchfab uh, website and just see if I could find a few products from the Sketchfab that I could actually import and use in my project um, sort of fairly straightforwardly. And basically you can see I found a really nice sort of headset. Um, maybe if I want to kind of download some of these things, there we go, I can just click onto my favorites and those are ones that I've downloaded already. So things like a laptop, a camera, and a nice HTC Vive 3D sort of VR headset. So if we want to uh, basically work with one of these images, what I would recommend is you duplicate the image, okay, because that will leave the original um, intact. So I'm just gonna turn off the bag and click on to refresh the image. So now the image is saved just with the backdrop, with the plinth, and without that bag. 
So what we can do is we can basically drag in one of our kind of products that we've downloaded and we just need to make sure we're signed in first. So once we're actually signed in, we can access all things like the uh, Sketchfab content and the Quixel content. So you can see I've dragged in this HTC Vive headset. It's a very nice model, very detailed actually. Looks really, really good. Um, and I'm just going to drag it onto that plinth, which is obviously a little bit small. So we'll pop open our XYZ panel and in the scaling, you'll see it's very easy for me to adjust adjust that scale um, and just make that plinth a little bit wider. Um, let's go a little bit more as well. I think we'll do about 180 and we'll keep the height the same. Okay, so that looks cool. I can now move my headset onto the plinth a bit more comfortably and just sort of rest it there. Maybe kind of rotate it around in real time as well. So, with a bit of path tracing, um, the image looks pretty ready to go already and it's only taken me a few moments and, you know, I'm really benefiting from these sort of really nicely set up sort of kind of studio product design sort of backdrops as it were. So, if you do want to, just remember to update your image when you're ready um, and then, you know, that will kind of be available for you to use. So, there's no reason why we can't adjust the camera or move the image and so on as well. Now do bear in mind, one thing you're gonna to need to do when you go back to your other images is basically turn off this new product that we've added. Okay, so that'll be something we'll cover in a second as well. Um, let's just do things like the focal length. So yeah, you can now see the studio sort of backdrop a bit more if you go out a bit too much. Um, on the rendering, we've got the different levels of quality. Try on medium um, is a good setting. I normally render in high quality, but when I'm actually working in the scene, I'll definitely work on low or medium settings the whole time due to the speed. You can see we've also got the uh, image format here, so I can easily sort of type in the different proportions. And I really like the way that Twinmotion actually kind of does that in real time now as we uh, type, so that's cool. Okay, so there we go, we've got one nice little product shot. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll go up to maybe one of our other scenes. Let's choose a nice one. Let's go for this one. Now, as I say, one downside is we've added the Vive. You've got to kind of basically turn the Vive off in those other scenes. Okay, so do bear that in mind, but that doesn't take long to do. So what we'll do, we'll pop up, we'll go and find the uh, bag if you like. So there's the original scene. Okay, let's go and turn the bag off. Okay, and let's just click update. Okay, there we go. So that's updated without the bag now. And now basically we can click onto that scene and go down and scroll down on our scene manager. So let's drag in this uh, Canon camera. Okay, and you can see the first time you drag in like Sketchfab models, they take a moment to generate as they kind of just generate the image itself. But then the second time you bring them in, they'll be a lot faster. Okay, so you know, in my Sketchfab library, you can see I've got quite a few interesting different favorites. I was wondering if I could actually change the uh, metal but looking at the way they've done this particular Sketchfab model, um, it's not individual materials. It looks like it's just one big sort of material for the whole camera. That's a bit of a shame. There's no real way to change it, but I just thought I'd try that out. Now, one little tip, by the way, is if you do want to uh, purge your materials, all you need to do now is select them all and basically then click the delete key and that will kind of tidy up any unused materials. Now you notice down in the uh, materials dock, there is the rather complex texture for that Canon camera. Um, it's obviously kind of UV mapped onto the object. Um, so there's no real way to make an adjustment of that itself. So do bear that in mind. Some models you can and others you can't. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and uh, have a look at the rotation. Um, you can see we've got the X and the Y rotation. Of course, it's the Z rotation we want if we want to keep things flat. And that makes it very nice and easy for me to very accurately position that camera. So hopefully you can see how easy it is to do really kind of high quality product shots using the new Twinmotion 2023 templates. Um, bring in your own items and make a few adjustments to things like the lighting and the backgrounds and colours as well. So very, very fun. What I think we'll do now is we'll have a quick look at another example. Um, so here's one where I've actually brought in um, my own plinth. Okay, and you can see I've now got this sort of nice shiny table with that HTC Vive on. I was just playing around with some nice sort of metallic materials to get those lovely reflections that you often see in these product shots. One thing you've got to be a bit careful of, if you kind of change the view too much, then can you just see um, very occasionally you kind of get the backdrop 
coming out of the image itself. So you can either make the backdrop bigger or just sort of frame up the image if you like. So I'm going to kind of create a new image and that looks really nice. Um, let's turn the path tracing onto medium level. And again, it's all rendering really fast actually. I don't know whether the path tracing has been improved, but it seems a lot faster on my computer than uh, previously actually, which is really good. So you can just sort of play around with some of these kind of materials in the background. I mean, that looks pretty cool, a little bit dark perhaps, but you know, just sort of playing around with the backdrop and the materials on the objects as well. And then when you're ready, of course, you can kind of go down to your image properties. So just click onto the image, select the image properties, and then basically set this up ready for rendering. So I think what we'll do, we'll go ahead and export a few of our images. So these are a couple that I've actually made. I've got the kind of bag shot from the original scene. Let's go through and actually export a few of our new product shots, um, the Vive and also maybe the camera tool as well. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll come back and have a little review of these lovely exported high res images uh, using the path tracing as well and see how these look. Okay, so here is uh, the final rendered image. Um, you can see the quality of the image looks amazing. Got some gorgeous sort of lighting. I love the kind of neutrality of the backdrop. And you know, if I was a product designer, I'd be super happy with that image just rendered in pretty much real time. Okay, so the final thing I wanted to have a look at was just to show you how easy it is to make little videos of your products as well. So I'm just gonna go onto the media doc, click onto the video tab and basically click to add my first keyframe. Now you can see, again, I'm able to kind of move forward pretty much in real time using the path tracing. This will depend on the speed of your GPU, but also very much the uh, low or medium or high settings for the path tracer. So working in low settings, I find fine just to preview that kind of animation. And basically the key trick with this is just to make sure you add nice sort of smoothly transitioned keyframes. So as you move from one to the other, you don't kind of do jerky movements or turn the camera too far. Otherwise um, you'll get, you know, really kind of like a roller coaster ride sort of type animations. So if I play in real time, it's even smoother, of course. So if I just click R to turn the path tracing off, um, now then I can basically do, let's do one final keyframe and just adjust that view so I get really, really kind of close up. There we go, just kind of pan around. There we go, and let's do one final little keyframe. Click on the plus sign. Okay, so we'll rewind, let's play, see how this looks. So it's going quite nicely, and then it kind of spins around to get that nice sort of side-on view. Now we can basically just tweak our materials. I think I'm gonna actually swap this material out. It's looking a bit dark. I want something with a bit more contrast. Um, so let's just try this nice sort of light gray. Yeah, that looks much better actually. So we're getting, you know, very easy to swap out things like the backdrop material and the contrast. We've got that nice sort of concrete grungy material in the back. But you know what, let's just try so easy. That's the beauty with twin motion. I think that is honestly, for me, the biggest thing. It's so easy just to try things out until you actually get the right result. And it gives you a lot of creative freedom and flexibility just to kind of work in real time. And I just love this sort of ability to, you know, get into your creative flow, try lots of different options. And then before you know it, you find the option that you like. That's, so that's actually really nice, just the very neutral backdrop. Um, but you've got those very sort of distinctive colors of the vibe and the table there. But yeah, you know, why not? Just try things out. You've got so many different amazing materials in Twin Motion now that you can use. Things like reflective materials always look amazing um, with the lighting. And I really like the uh, metallic materials as well as a nice sort of contrast to the plastic on the product itself. Okay, so when we're ready, let's click settings. Let's go and change the um, camera to, I think what we'll do is let's go for a sort of square type relation on this image. So we'll do a square video, that'd be interesting. So basically with the settings selected, all that means all the frames of the video will be selected. So now when we click, we can play through and it looks really cool. So this is really one of the benefits of Twinmotion, this ability to preview things like video in absolutely real time. You know, I've used lots of 3D software in my time and I do find that using real-time rendering software the most enjoyable and actually the most sort of free, freely creative as well. Just because you can kind of try things out so rapidly, you don't have to kind of pre-plan everything. And sometimes, you know, your best ideas just come on the fly when you're actually kind of working away. 
So it's a very nice model. Um, as you can see, this is a you know a very very uh, interesting sort of process for product designers. And bearing in mind, you know, there is a lot of content out there already. Um, in terms of sort of creating things like the backdrops and the plinths and the props, those sort of things should be easy. All you've got to do is import your product and basically set some sort of nice shots up and maybe some videos and then basically render those out. So let's pop open our statistics panel. You can see I'm still getting 94 FPS, which is pretty amazing, um, even though it's sort of a very high quality sort of visual. I did want to just remind you that you can now change things like the um, interface uh, size. So for those of you whose eyesight isn't quite as good, you can adjust that. I actually really like going for the very small 75% one. Um, I find that that gives me much more sort of screen real estate for my viewport, which of course for me is probably the main thing. As long as you can see the buttons and you know where they are, um, that should work quite well, particularly on like a 4K monitor as well. You'll have an absolutely massive sort of viewport in the middle. Do bear in mind one thing, if your GPU isn't up to scratch, then um, the bigger the viewport, the more pixels you're rendering. Now, one way around that is to do viewport resolution scaling. Um, now, that means the viewport quality won't be quite as good, but honestly, you don't really notice a lot of difference. But it means that it's rendering less pixels, so the speed, the frame rate, will be, look at that, 175 frames a second um, while I'm actually rendering an animation. Now you notice that if I really want to, I can even preview the video with path tracing and it's still getting respectable 20 frames a second. Um, so that's not bad. As I say, you do get a bit of kind of the grain and uh, sort of noise, if you like, on the path tracing, though not quite as silky smooth as real time. But, you know, definitely workable and I can still make sort of these tweaks and adjustments to my image just to frame up, for example, that very last shot before I kind of click on the update when I'm ready. Okay, so finally, let's go over to my export tab. Um, all I need to do is load in these new videos. So I've got my images there that I can select and render out. Um, I actually don't need those right now, so let's deselect those. Let's go for the video. Let's load in a couple of my videos that I'm ready to rock and roll with. And basically, when we're ready, let's go export. So the speed of these will be pretty zippy. Uh, the real-time ones would render in literally a few seconds. Um, but even with the path tracing on, I think we'll be able to kind of render these videos out in literally a couple of minutes. Um, so I know it's a nice simple scene, but hopefully what you've seen here is that Twinmotion is a very capable rendering product, um, not just for architectural and exterior and interior visualization, but also for things like product visualization as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As usual, let's round off the video with reviewing these final images at the end. And do make sure if you are new around here, please like and subscribe. I would love to make more videos for you and the support on the channel really, really helps. So here's the final videos. Thanks for watching as ever. See you in the next one.